Hello and welcome to Matt's Reloading Bench. Today I'm going to be starting a new loadout series for the 224 Valkyrie and in this series I'll be using the 77 grain Sierra Match King hollow point boat tail. I'm going to make up 10 shot ladder tests using Varget, Reloader 17, and CFE 223. I'll be doing each ladder test, one set with CCI 400, which is their standard small rifle primer, and the other set with the CCI 450, which is their Magnum small rifle primer. Once again, I'll be using my Starline brass. Now, unfortunately, I only have enough powder with the Reloader 17 to do my 10-shot ladder tests and do the next video with the five-shot groups to see what the end result is going to be. If it does prove to be the best, unfortunately I will not have any more powder to use for myself just for fun and planking. But that's all right, because I'm hoping at some point in the near future I'll be able to get my hands on some, and if or when I am able to, I'll already have the loadout done. I'm going to do a quick overview of the charges that I'll be using for each of the three powders in these ladder tests. Looking at the Sierra Reloading Catalog, it shows that with the 77 grain hollow point boat tail match king using Reloader 17 powder, the max charge weight is 28.5 grains of powder and that'll produce around 2900 feet per second. We'll be using that as our red line and working down at two tenths of a grain increments for 10 shots. Using CFE 223 powder, the max charge weight is 26.0 grains, giving us a maximum muzzle velocity of around 2,800 feet per second. Once again, we'll be loading at two tenths of a grain increments with 26.0 at our max, working down 10 shots. With Varget powder, the maximum charge weight is 24.9 grains of powder, and that'll give us, again, around 2,800 feet per second muzzle velocity. And we'll be using the 24.9 as our maximum charge weight at our red line and working down from that at two tenths of a grain increments for 10 shots. The first thing I'm going to have to do in this process is figure out bullet seating depth. And to do that, I'm going to be using my Hornady OAL gauge with their modified case. So I'll have to remove the bolt. In this type of setup, I always will take something and put it in the way so that the upper cannot collapse down onto the lower. And to do that, I'll just put a magic marker in there like so. I will insert the OAL gauge with the modified case till I can hear and feel that shoulder make contact with the shoulder inside the chamber. So I will put that forward. And as you can see, the bullet stayed in the chamber, which is expected. For me, it happens more often than not. It's no big deal. You just have to take a cleaning rod and run it down the barrel from the muzzle end. So I'll take the bullet, put it back in the modified case. I'll get my caliper out and see what we've got for a seating depth. So I'm getting 1.778. I will insert that a second time into the chamber. Alright, I've got the bullet, 
going to measure it again. One point seven seven nine. So I would say between 1778 and 1779, I will just go with the 1778. I'm going to subtract 15 thousandths. So my bullet seating depth is going to be around 1.753. Here I have two sets of brass set up, one loaded with CCI 400 primers and the other with CCI 450 primers. Both are going to be used for the Reloader 17 powder, which is going to start at 26.7 grains and work all the way up to 28.5 and 2 tenths of a grain increments. Here I have two sets of brass primed up with CCI 400s on the top and CCI 450s on the bottom. And this is going to be for the CFE 223 powder. I'm going to be starting at 24.2 grains and working up to 26.0 at 2 tenths of a grain increments. And here I have the two sets of brass primed with CCI 400s on the top and CCI 450s on the bottom. And this is going to be for the Varget powder, starting at 23.1 grains and working all the way up to 24.9 at 2 tenths of a grain increments. Now that I've got the bullet seating depth and the powder charges for each of my powders figured out, I'm going to go ahead and get all this stuff loaded up and head out to the range and see what kind of results I can get with these 10 shot ladder tests. And the results that I'm looking for are flat nodes within the chart that I make up uh, in the muzzle velocity between one uh, powder charge and the next. And um, what I'm looking for in that flat node is the potential to have a wide variance in powder charge with minimal effect as far as muzzle velocity. And in return, what that may produce is really good standard deviation, really good extreme spread, and potentially really good um, group sizes. So it doesn't mean a whole heck of a lot at 100 yards, but once I'm done with this testing process, it may reflect well when I'm trying to get that one mile shot later in the future. Finally made it to the range, and we're gonna shoot the 10 shot ladder test for the 224 Valkyrie. So I got everything set up. I'm gonna go ahead and start getting some trigger time. This 10 shot ladder test is gonna be with the Reloader 17 powder using the CCI 400 standard small rifle primers. With this combination of powder and primer, I really don't see anything super promising on the high end. Now on the low end, between 26.9 and 27.1, there's only a two foot per second difference. So that's something that we can look at, but I'd like to compare what we have for all the other ladder tests before I make any decisions on that one. This 10 shot ladder test is gonna be with the Reloader 17 using the CCI 450 Magnum small rifle primers. With this powder and primer combination, I see a real promising flat between 27.7 grains and 27.9 grains of powder. There's only a one foot per second difference in that range, so I will probably load up five shot groups at 27.7, 27.8, and 27.9 to see what we get for standard deviation and extreme spread combined with group size. This ladder test is gonna be with the Varget gunpowder with CCI 400 standard small rifle primers.
With this powder and primer combination, I really don't see anything too promising. Granted, I do have a really nice flat between 23.5 and 23.7 grains of powder with a muzzle velocity at around 2670-ish. That's a little lower than what I'm looking for. This 10-shot ladder test is with Varget powder and the CCI 450 Magnum small rifle primers. With this powder and primer combination, I see a little bit of promise between 24.3 grains of powder and 24.5 with a muzzle velocity between 2746 and 2756. Granted, it's 10 feet per second difference, which may not seem like a whole lot, but it's more than what I prefer. At the same time, I'm going to go ahead and load up this range just to see what I can get for results. This 10 shot ladder test is going to be with CFE 223 using the CCI 400 standard small rifle primers. With this powder combination, I've got a very weird quirk at the low end of the charge chart, but uh, it looks like I've got a really nice flat between 24.6 and 25.0 grains of powder. The unfortunate thing is, is it's at the lower end of the muzzle velocity scale at only 2670. So I'm probably not going to do anything with this particular combination. This 10 shot ladder test is going to be with the CFE 223 with the CCI 450 Magnum small rifle primers. With this powder and primer combination, uh, it looks really nice between 25.2 and 25.4 grains of powder with a muzzle velocity between 2713 and 2716. So I am going to go ahead and make up five shot groups at 25.2, 25.3, and 25.4 grains of powder. I've got all my ladder tests done. So I'm gonna pack up all my stuff, head home, and check out the data and see if I've got any flat nodes on any of these and uh, start working up some five shot groups from what we got. Just to recap on my findings, with the Reloader 17 powder and the CCI 400 primers, I really don't have anything that I wanna mess around with. Yes, I do have the nice flat at the very low end of the load spectrum, but I'm, I'm looking for more muzzle velocity than that. With the 450 primers, I've got a really nice flat between 27.7 grains and 27.9 grains. That is something that I'm definitely gonna load up. With the Varget gun powder, uh, with the CCI 400 primers, I've got a really decent flat node once again at the very low end of the load spectrum, but I'm looking for more muzzle velocity than that. So with the 450 primers, I've got a semi-decent flat between 24.3 and 24.5 grains of powder. So I am going to do a load up on that. And with the CFE 223 powder, with the CCI 400 primers, I do have really nice flat, once again, on the lower end of the load spectrum. I'm still looking for a higher muzzle velocity than that. With the 450 primers, I've got a decent flat uh, between 25.2 and 25.4 grains of powder. So I will be doing a load up on that. 
One interesting thing that I've noticed is all three of these powders have flat nodes using the CCI 450 primers and uh, with the CCI 400 primers, if there is a flat node, it's on the low end. Where with the 450s, if there is one, it's on the higher end. Just an observation that I have, something that I figured I'd point out. All right, I'm going to be loading all three of the powders using the CCI 450 primers like I pointed out before. With the Reloader 17, I'm going to be loading 27.7 to 27.9 grains of powder. With the Varget, 24.3 to 24.5. And with CFE 223, I'll be loading 25.2 to 25.4. I'm going to go ahead, get all this stuff set up, get all the five shot groups loaded up. And the next video will be at the range shooting the five shot groups and going over the results from that. In a previous series I did, I did all of this using the Hornady ELD match bullets at 88 grains. And the results weren't terrible, but they were not as good as I was hoping they would or should have been. So I'm hoping to get better results with these. Thanks for watching, and if you like my videos, please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell so that you can get notifications when new videos come out. If you have any questions about the process that I use in this video, please let me know in the comments section below. And if you like it, give it a thumbs up, let me know. Until next time, shoot straight and be safe.